Hey, it's Anthony. As you can see from the title of the video, we're gonna talk about price action and market structure. But before we dive in the video, I just wanna say thank you so much, honestly, from the bottom of my heart for everyone who's been supporting me lately on this channel. I really do appreciate all your support. I just wanna use this channel to share and document my journey as I become more and more profitable. If there's something you wanna see, just let me know in the comments down below. If you do appreciate this video, just give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. It's taken me two to three years of, of tons of losses, dark times, and really just second guessing myself. Lots of courses purchased, lots of mentorship programs gone through, countless hours studying. But at the end of the day, it's so worth it because at the end of the day, when you do have this skill, it's a money printing skill that you can do from anywhere. Stick with it. You'll become consistently profitable over time. Without further ado, let's dive into the charts now. We're on the one hour chart. And before we talk about price action, I want to talk about market structure. In my opinion, market structure is basically looking at is the market making higher highs and higher lows or is it making lower lows and lower highs? That's what basic market structure is. And what you want to do is once you identify if the market is kind of trending up or trending down, then you can trade within that bias. That's all that market structure is in my opinion. So if you just take a look at this chart right now, you'll see on the, the first half, we're making higher lows and higher highs. And in the second half, we're clearly making lower lows and lower highs. So from this first half, you would say the market structure is shifted to the upside. That's what you would say. And then in the second half here, you would say the market structure is shifted to the downside. So what you wanna do is you wanna identify when the market structure shifts and changes. How do you do that? You identify what's known as a swing low. A swing low is basically where you have a low that the candle made and to the left and to the right are higher lows. That's important, right? So one candle has a low and then the candle to the left and the candle to the right is a higher low. That is a swing low. Same thing for the high. So if you take a look to my left here, we see at this where my mouse is, this is a swing high. Why? Because to the right, the high is lower. To the left, the high is lower. Then you come down and you see right where my mouse is right here, this green candle. This is a swing low because to the left, that low is higher. To the right, that low is higher. So there's a swing high, there's a swing low. Now, when you come again, you see the next low, another swing low. This swing low is higher than the previous swing low. So when you see that the next swing low is higher than the previous swing low, you say, okay, where are we likely to target next? Well, we identify that the market structure is going to the upside. So what happens is they target liquidity and liquidity means essentially just above a recent high. So liquidity, if you're targeting liquidity to the upside, it's just a uh, above a recent high. And we're targeting that because that's where shorts stops are so they want to bring it to that level just to go back again once you identify that the market structure is going to the upside you see that we put in a swing low once we put in the higher swing low you ask yourself where are we targeting we are targeting the recent swing high so that's where you can get in along say you get in on this candle like this is a one hour candle we made the low well, after this, this other swing low was put in, you could have an entry right here with your stop below this swing low and your TP being above that high. Why? Because we're identifying that this is a higher low. Problem being here, this was very impulsive. There's, this was very explosive because technically speaking, you wouldn't get in this entry until this one hour bar finished. Why? Because you would need to see that this one hour bar did not sweep this low because then this would not be the swing low. So that's why what I'm showing right now, you wouldn't even be able to get in that because these two bars happen too quickly. But you could go down to the 15 minute chart and see the same thing and then get in a better entry. But that's for another video. All I wanna focus right now is market structure. So we've identified that if the market structure is going to the upside after a swing low, once we put in a higher swing low, we want to target the most recent high. So we did that, boom, pushed up, okay? Then we came down and this is where it may get tricky because you could argue, okay, we made another higher low right here where my mouse is. So why don't we enter in uh, right here? So now you would say, okay, based on market structure, I would get in long 
right here, I would put a stop below there and I would target new highs again because we've been consistently making the higher highs and the higher lows. Well, look, look, look what, what happened. Broke down, you would have been stopped out. And then here was a swing low. So same idea here, you would say, oh, okay, well, we put a swing low right, right here. So let's get in, let's get in long here, put a stop below here, and let's target a new high again. Well, what would have happened? Came up, broke down, stopped you out, and shifted market structure to the downside. So you could even argue that right here was the shift in the market structure. So where was the shift in the market structure? Okay, so just looking at this chart, we put in a swing low, a higher swing low, a higher swing low, boom, broke this swing low. What does this mean? Once we broke this swing low, it means we are now going to put in lower highs. Make notes on the market structure shift. This is a market structure shift. Why? Because we went below the pattern of higher swing lows. Broke down. What does this mean now? This means this is the ultimate high. We will not go above this high. Why does this mean that? This means that because we broke this swing low and now the trend should be lower lows and lower highs. So now, once we come up to a Fib retracement, that's where I'm looking for an entry short for new lows. That's a, that's a topic for another video, but if I would show you real quick, what I would personally be doing is I would likely be joining a FIB. Let's say, okay, we broke market structure. Where do I wanna get in short? At least 50%, preferably 618 FIB. So I would be wanting, and these fair value gaps, but that's also for another video. So I would be getting in, let's say, at the 50%, my stop above this high, my target below this low. You're in a one-to-one, -one and your entry is right there, 50% retracement, targeting new lows because now we've identified the market structure is going to the downside. And what did we do? We kept making the lower lows, and this was a, a, a new swing high, next swing high, another swing high, and then boom, this swing high broke this swing high. Remember, a swing high is where there is a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. So now there's this, this is a market structure shift to the upside, technically speaking, right? But it gets tricky because now if you scroll to the right again, oh, what happened? Boom, we broke down and we continue down. Then after putting in low, this is a more significant push to the upside this looks more convincing than this. This was a feeble break of structure. But this was a convincing break of structure. Boom, pushed up. So now, and, and took out this one as well. So now once we came here, you would say, oh, if we're going higher, where are we targeting next? Well, we would clearly be targeting the ultimate high over here. Why? Because there's stops there and we've identified that the shift in market structure is now to the upside. Well, what happened? Well, you could get in a long on the pullback. Any pullback you get in a long, your stop though would have to be down there, but where would you be targeting? You'd be targeting above this high. So now you're into one-to-one -one and you hit TP again. That's all I'm gonna cover for market structure. Now we'll talk about price action. And also, this is just market structure on the one hour chart. We could go into endless examples by looking at the market structure on the daily chart, market structure on the 30 minute chart, market structure on the 15 minute chart. So now that we understand swing highs, swing lows, and shifts in market structure to the upside, shifts in market structure to the downside, and where are we be targeting, because remember you wanna ask yourself, every time we're in a market structure, we're either targeting lows or we're targeting highs. Why? Because there's stops there, there's liquidity there. So if we were trending up, market structure is going to the upside, we are targeting above a recent high. If we are shifting market structure to the downside, we are targeting a recent low. That alone leveled up my trading a ton, that helped me so much. But the second piece now is price action. So price action to me is just candles. Price action just means if a specific candle forms or a specific pattern forms, I know that there's a greater probability in the next candles unfolding a specific way. That's all price action means to me. Again, price action means that if I see a specific candle, it means that 
I have a, a higher probability of a, another specific candle coming up in the future. So we'll go over that uh, right now. This this candle right here, this is this is known as, as a reversal candle. Why? Because it's a red candle, it means we sold off, but sellers were exhausted because it finished being pushed up, which means there's a higher probability of the next candle being higher than this previous candle. Again, it's just because this typically means sellers have been exhausted. Same idea to the upside. When you see a candle like this, it means that it's this is more of an indecision candle, red candle, but it means that it's typically a reversal in the way uh, the, the chart is trading. So if we're pushing up and that you see a candle like this, it means that there's a wick at the top and a wick at the bottom. It means that there's a higher probability of the next candle being in the opposite direction of the recent trend. Why? Because buyers got exhausted, sellers pushed it down. So the next candle has a higher probability of being red. On top of that, it means that, okay, well, if this happened, where is the next likely target? The support to the left. Support to the left is right here about 41.26. Did we push down there? No, we didn't get that low. Reason being is there's not as much volume at these times. That's nothing to take in consideration. This is a futures market, so it trades all the time, but there's not a lot of volume at, at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., 6 p.m., so it's not as likely to happen. But if this was in real trading hours, you know, at New York time, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., there would be a higher probability of us trading down to this level before continuing up. Because when there's enough volume in the market, it pushes it down and reacts better to price action. So that's another thing I want to keep in mind. Price action works better in higher volume situations. So it'll it'll respect how candles typically are in higher volume scenarios. And you want to search up when are the high volume times for whatever you're trading. And that's not that's a topic for another video. So continuing on with price action, uh, this is known as an engulfing candle. And after an engulfing candle, there's typically continuation. So you see right here, this is a big engulfing candle. Why is it engulfing? It's engulfing because it, it took out the whole range of the previous bar. And there's a higher probability for a continuation in the next candles. Same idea on the green bar. So we're coming down and coming down, but then there's this big engulfing green bar and there's a higher probability for a continuation. What happened? We had continuation pushing up. Same idea as soon as we were tight here. So we're tight, 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 tight. Engulfing candle, boom, big engulfing, we, we traded higher. Same idea right here. Big engulfing red candle, took out the previous candle's range, and boom, more red candles. But once the, the body started getting narrow again, there was a possible reversal. Once we get the big candle that formed, boom, pushed up. So again, I can just, we can go constantly with this. You know, smaller body candles, as soon as you get that big body candle, boom, pushes up more to the upside. Small bodies again, high probability for reversal. There's another reversal candle, why? Because there's a big wick at the top. Big wick at the top means that you're likely to come back down. This is all on the one hour chart, but we can go to endless examples. So just for for this these purposes, we'll take a look at the 15 minute chart of what happened yesterday, Tuesday. Yesterday, Tuesday was technically a very easy time to trade, but a hard time to get in an entry if, if you're looking for shorts because there wasn't any big pullbacks, it was just continuation. And you don't know whether you're gonna get a trending day like this or whether you're gonna choppy day where it pulls back up into this area before it continue lower. So if you just take a look at this, ever since 3 a.m., we just started trending down. We put in a swing high at 3 a.m. and we were trending that down. We started taking out lows. You could have seen that once we took out this low uh, right here, we took out this low from the previous night and we couldn't make any uh, new highs. So. This means that the market structure was going to the downside on the 50 minute chart, and we didn't really give a good time to get in short, but we just kept making new lows. So you could just keep getting in and trading with the market structure. We put in a high at 3 a.m., we went lower, had a little bounce, came down, swept lows, could not take out this recent high, dumped down, and we had a big engulfing bar. So we had this big engulfing candle at 9.30 a.m., and then just kept getting sold sold all the way down, new lows, new lows, new lows. This right here was a swing low, and you could have seen, oh, maybe it's time to get in. No, it's not time to get in yet. Why? Because we didn't break the market structure to the upside. Technically speaking, there was no real break in market structure to the upside because based on the 50 minute chart, we would have to be looking at this swing high right here. So once we get above this high right here, then we can start to look for longs. Otherwise, we just wanna look for shorts. If you went down to the five minute chart, you may find, we'll just go down to the five minute chart. Cause if you go down the five minute chart and you go on Tuesday, maybe you'll find a swing high and, and a break in market structure. 
Okay, so right here, there's a swing high. So basically, this is a swing high, and this is a swing high in the five minute chart. So now you could have seen, okay, we came down, we put in this swing high, but we broke this low again. When would we start to look for longs? You could have gotten a long after this impulse, but no, you want to get in a long actually after a break of this high. So we broke this high, we came down, and this is where you want to get in a long. Now, where do you want to target next? Well, there's no real swing highs again until a lot later, but you'll notice that this shifted market structure up because we broke this high. So we shifted it up and then we pulled back. So if you want to draw a fib retrace, you just go from here to this high, boom, 618, 50%. That's where you want to get in your long entry. So you go long at the 50% or the 618 and you put a stop below the slope and you target another swing high. But the problem being is where is the swing high? Right here. So now, based on this trade, based on the five minute chart, you're targeting 4170. So now you're in a long because market structure shifted to the upside around 1145 AM because we broke this swing high on the five minute chart. Your stop is below this low here and your target is above this high, recent high here at 4170. So now we're in this long on the five minute chart and you can see we've been trending up and now it's Wednesday pre-market and we're floating around the same levels. But if you go zoom out now on the 50 minute chart, let's see if this plays out. We'll see what happens at FOMC. But again, this is basically the long you're gonna based on the five minute chart. It is a six to one and we'll see if, if it ends up playing out. You can see what happens after this video goes live. Is see if we get to 4170 before 4105. But based on the 15 minute chart, we haven't we haven't shifted market structure to the upside yet. And that the market can trade all the way up to 4178 and still be bearish and still be looking for lower highs and lower lows. But then again, if you zoom out to the one hour chart, now on the one hour chart, you want to identify where is the, the next swing high. Next swing high is 4191. So based on this, we can trade all the way up to 4190 during FOMC and still be targeting this low based on the one hour chart. If you might be confused at this point, but the more you look at it, the more you understand all these patterns, they all happen, all these candles, they all happen on the same charts. It's just when it's on a higher time frame, it's a bigger move and it's likely to be slower. When it's on a lower time frame, like the five minute, 15 minute, moves happen much more frequently. Market structure shifts happen much more frequently and you can target more lows, you can target more highs but you'll capture less points and it'll happen quicker. So maybe you'll target 10 points or 20 points instead of targeting 50 points or 100 points on the higher time frames. That's gonna cover it for this video. I know it was a lot of information. Watch this video a few times, make some notes. Let me know what you think, but this has helped me so much in my trading. If you want more specific videos on, on price action, on more time frames, I can go through that. But let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see more of. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. I wish you the best in trading today and throughout the week. And look out for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.